Everything you want to know about outdoor life Saturday. From the news station, WNEP TV 16. Frank Andrews, Dorothy Lucy, meteorologist Noreen Clark in the backyard, and Jay Christopher's Sports. This is Newswatch 16 Midday. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Newswatch 16 Midday for Wednesday. Today is September 7th, and for just about everyone who is not already back in school, it's the first day of class for a new year. I'm Frank Andrews. I'm Dorothy Luzzi and Nana Coke. Frank is right. There is no more escape, no more sleeping until noon for most of the kids all over the area. The book is shut on those lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer, and the textbooks are open. For all of you who didn't have to go back last week, this is it. Everybody is back, and here in Nanakoke, school has started, and the teachers are back at school, too. But that two-year labor dispute is not over, and it is possible that the teachers may soon be out of the classroom and back out on the picket line. So some high school students aren't too enthusiastic about starting today. We're losing out. It's not the teachers who are gaining anything. We're the ones who are losing out because we're just losing education. Thank you. You only get your name says last year's strike, the 25-day teacher strike, cost her too much of her summer vacation. Summer, it wasn't fun at all. We didn't have that much time off. But some students of the smaller variety see a potential teacher strike in a different light. Because I like being on strike. Why do you like it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you, get, you get to go outside while it's still hot. <laughs> you get to stay home. Stay home, relax in the air-conditioned house. That's why I, I like the teacher strike. Maybe that is the way to lure kids back into school, put air conditioners into the schools. If the teachers do pick up picket signs anytime soon, there are going to be some unlikely folks who will be out there with them. The parents of some of the kids who go to school here in Nanakoke. Some parents tell us they are so tired of the almost two-year-old labor dispute that if the teachers picket, the parents are going to be picketing too. On this opening day of school in Nanakoke, we have little to report in progress in settling the dispute. The teachers are still asking for binding arbitration. The school board is still saying they are not interested in having any outsiders come in and settle the problem. So, Frank, I would suggest if you're going to be polishing up an apple, you might polish it up for the state mediator. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dorothy. You know, school is already back at the Keystone Junior College campus in La Plume. Went back last week. College now has a new president. Here he is. He's Lewis Wilcox, Jr. Dr. Wilcox, formerly president of Unity College in Maine. He becomes the fifth president of Keystone. Says he has no immediate plans to change anything at Keystone. Just like to spend some time getting to know the 1,000 members of the student body. Dr. Wilcox was chosen out of 200 candidates who applied for the job as president of Keystone Junior College in La Plume. A Luzerne County infant and his mother are flying to Boston this midday, a flight which may result in eyesight for the baby. 16-month-old Guy Ride of New Columbus, that's in the southwestern corner of Luzerne County, has been blind since birth. The baby, his mother and grandmother, left this area for Boston a short time ago where two doctors will operate to try and restore the baby's eyesight. Right now we're not sure how much he'll have or how long it'll last, but at least you know, we have to risk it anyway. This morning's trip from Avoca to Boston and the cost of the operation are courtesy of several Lions Clubs and hundreds of people who contributed to a fund for Baby Guy. We'll have more on this touching story on Newswatch 16 tonight at 6. Now, some people in the Northumberland County community of Riverside want someone to look into their complaints about dirty water, low pressure, and water pump breakdowns in the community. More on the situation now from Newswatch 16's Bob Costantini. These people living in the Hillside Estates development of Riverside, Northumberland County, are gathered in front of our News Watch 16 camera because of water. They have it now, but three and a half days without it are bringing a dispute over the development's water system to a head. We need uh, somebody to take this water service and maintain it so we have good water and good pressure up here, which we have none. What is the water like when it comes out? It is dirty. It's grimy. The man running the well and purification system for 32 homes is Tom Ernst. While fixing a broken pump, he talks about the water quality. Anybody's going to get rust in the water, even when they do flushings of any type of, uh, to blow off water there, they're still going to get rusty water. What about improving the system? Improving the system? If somebody would like to spend $10,000 to improve it, they can have it. 
One resident, Leonard Killian, thinks the water is fine. He does have a $40 filter in his home that removes rust and other impurities. Homeowners in Hillside Estates pay just $5.30 a month for their water. System owner Tom Ernst says he'll soon ask the Public Utility Commission to double that rate to make the system profitable. It would be worth it if the man would maintain the equipment up there. But if you go up and look at the equipment, it is all antiquated, it's 26 years old. These residents also complain about low water pressure and what they say is an antiquated purification system. This is where some of the water is stored and purified with chlorine. Thomas Ernst claims that coming out of this system, the water is among the purest in the state. Bob Costantini, Newswatch 16, Riverside, Northumberland County. Schnorri Clark with the story of a refreshing breeze that's blowing relief through northeastern and central Pennsylvania. The weather is next on Newswatch 16 Midday. Newswatch 16 is everywhere. Welcome back to Nanakoke, where it is the first day of school for some kids. That's something that may have made you nervous, but think back a couple of years to something else that may have scared you a little bit. Do you remember when you took your driver's test to get your license? Did that make you nervous? Well, I guess that's the kind of thing that doesn't wear off with age. Yesterday, a 69-year-old Wilkesbury woman, Edna Martin, went to the Wyoming State Police Barracks to get her driver's license. And, uh, Here's how it ended up. Apparently, Ms. Martin put the car in forward instead of reverse. She hit the gas and then hit the building, broke a window, knocked an air conditioning unit clear down to the basement. Ms. Martin is okay this midday. No word yet on whether or not she got her driver's license. Now let's go out to the backyard and talk to meteorologist Noreen Clark. Noreen, I heard a nasty rumor that you got your driver's license from Cracker Jack. Any truth to that? <laughs> no, that's not true, Dorothy, but I want to know if this Ms. Martin got a ticket for all she did. <laughs> Well, this afternoon is certainly a big change from what we've had over the last two days with its slightly cooler temperatures and lower humidity. It's just great, and I know those students that you're talking to or seeing where you're located wish they were free this afternoon, but you can tell them that the sun won't set until a little bit after 7 p.m. tonight. In a moment, we'll check the current readings outside, but first I'd like you to have a look at some cattails. Here in the backyard, it is a warm 78 degrees. The relative humidity is 64%, and this is falling very nicely during the day. The winds are cool, and they're out of the northwest at 8 miles per hour, and we will have a breeze this afternoon. And the barometric pressure is on the rise. Checking the satellite picture that was taken very early this morning, we can see that the front has weakened as it passed through central and northeastern Pennsylvania. And how we can tell this is there are no bright clouds right with the front. And what this meant for us is that we didn't get much as far as any rain as it passed over us. In fact, Tawanda got a light shower at 7 o'clock this morning. Here at the airport in Wilkesbury, Scranton, we got a light shower at 9 o'clock. In both areas, it wasn't enough to water the garden. We call this a trace as far as precipitation. So both locations got very, very little, so you may still want to water, water the garden. We're going to get into some cooler, drier air because this is the leading edge of some slightly cooler, drier air. And tonight, we're going to get into some clear skies where temperatures are able to fall into the 50s. It's going to be very good for sleeping. And for tomorrow, we're going to have a beautiful day because the high pressure area now over Illin pardon me, Iowa, and the skies that are right over northern Illinois are going to move over us and bring us bright sunshine, blue skies, and a very pleasant day. Let's look ahead into the weekend. Here's the weekend weather watch, and we've got a horn beeping here. It's going to be a very hot weekend. We have a high pressure area that's going to center itself over the mid-Atlantic states. And what I mean by very warm is above normal temperatures reaching up into the upper 80s. And it's going to be a sizzling weekend. Skies will be partly to mostly sunny, so I suggest you make your plans now. And here's the forecast. Partly sunny, breezy, and lower humidity for this afternoon. The high temperature, 82 degrees. It's going to be cool under fair skies. I should say clear skies tonight with a low of 57 degrees. Excellent for sleeping tonight. Tomorrow, a beautiful day with blue skies, bright sunshine, a high temperature near 80 degrees. Partly sunny for Friday with a high of 84. And Saturday gets downright hot with a high of 87 degrees. Dorothy, start making those plans for the weekend because it looks basically dry and temperatures are going to be on the rise. Congratulations. Let's hold on to summer as long as we possibly can. Thank you. And next up, Jay Christopher with the Sports Watch.
If it happened, we were there. Newswatch 16 is everywhere. A plane crash in South Scranton. Within minutes, Newswatch 16 was first on the scene. Newswatch 16 crews were the first to give you live pictures and complete coverage as it happened. I, I could never imagine I'd experience anything in a rock like that in my life. First, live and complete coverage. When news happens, we are there. Newswatch 16 is everywhere. Welcome back, everyone, to Newswatch 16 Midday. For those of you that are concerned about Jimmy Cephalo, I understand you spoke with him by telephone a few minutes ago, huh, Jimmy? Yes, it wasn't too long ago. Uh, he sounded a bit uh, on the groggy side after some knee operations. Uh, I should say one knee operation took place yesterday. Doing better, I hope. Yes, much better. Hello again, everybody. Sunday afternoon, Miami Dolphins wide receiver Jimmy Cephalo of Pittston area and Penn State fame sustained a knee injury in the Dolphins' 12-0 victory over the Buffalo Bills. Well, late yesterday, he had knee surgery, as I mentioned, and early reports said he'd be out for the balance of the season. Well, late this morning, I talked to Jimmy in his room at Mercy Hospital in Miami, and here's what he told me. He's been in a cast, uh, he is in a cast, and will be out of action for at least six weeks. Now, the injury was to the inside of the left knee, not as serious as first reported. In fact, Jimmy said it was just some ligaments that were separated slightly from the bone, and that surgery was minimal. It amounted to a partial tear. The good news, after six weeks, Jim said, he'll undergo rehabilitation and then he'll be reactivated. So Cephalo expects to see action about nine games into the season. He included the playoffs in that comment. Jimmy said his friend Tommy Vigorito has had more extensive surgery. He's lost for the balance of the season. Vigorito was injured in that same game against Buffalo. Still in football. Penn State coach Joe Paterno has tabbed Dan Lonergan as his starting quarterback for the Saturday's home opener against Cincinnati. Lonergan had been given the nod for the starting assignment. Uh, he had been vying for that position, rather, with Doug Strang. Paterno said Lonergan got the nod after displaying good field generalship in Penn State's loss to Nebraska two weeks ago. Toronto defeats California 6-4, Baltimore 8-1, downing the Boston Red Sox. Elsewhere in the American League, Toronto 6-4, Detroit, rather, over Cleveland. No game there. They were rained out. Chicago 7-6, downing Oakland. It was... Milwaukee, 6-3 over New York. Minnesota shades Texas, 5-3. And Seattle took the measure of Kansas City, 3-1. National League slicing in. Montreal, 8-2 Chicago. Philadelphia shuts out New York, 2-0. Houston at Atlanta was rained out. Pittsburgh shuts out St. Louis, 5-0. Cincinnati hammered San Francisco, 11-1. San Diego downing Los Angeles, 8-3. Now, we go directly to the fish forecast for some positive fishing news this afternoon. At approximately 2.45, you will be at your best position to catch some fish, maybe, if you don't use a barbed hook. Frank, that's all the sports way. Fish are washing. You'll be out. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Well, it was good vibrations in Williamsport last night as a crowd of 8,000 people listened to the Beach Boys in concert. But as Newswatch 16's Craig Stevens reports, now the concert was extra special for one Beach Boys fan. As she left Divine Providence Hospital in Williamsport, Michelle Eberlin of Muncie Valley had no idea what was in store for her. Williamsport policemen Gary Mayers and Glenn Bunce have arranged something special for this 13-year-old leukemia patient. It's this meeting backstage at Bowman Field in Williamsport with the singing group The Beach Boys. This meeting is all part of a new program called Dreams Come True. The policemen try to arrange special events for the chronically ill. After the meeting, Michelle and her mother were all smiles. Was it everything you expected? No. Hmm? More. More? What did you think of the Beach Boys? I don't know. Are you happy? Yeah. What do you think about all the people who helped Jennifer stream oh, country? I think it's really great. I'm, everyone's really worked hard. I can't believe it. <laughs> so many. Just so many wonderful people. As Michelle watched the Beach Boys perform from a special seat right up on stage, the two policemen who made all of this possible said their job was done. Never thought that, that it would go this far for her, you know, and it would be this easy. It, it really wasn't any problems of just making the right connections, and I think the Lord helped a lot in this one. Happy for her, I guess, and I hope that she's happy, and I think she is. She's really thrilled. She got a T-shirt and a Beach Boys hat, and she's going to have on-stage seats, which, you know, you can't get any better. Because of two courageous cops and a lot of other people who did care, this concert truly is a dream come true for Michelle Everlin. Craig Stevens, Newswatch 16 at Bowman Field in Williamsport. And we'll be right back with another live report on the start of the school year in just a moment as Newswatch 16 Midday continues. Hey, Joe.
We are back in Nanakoke, where some mothers say this is the year's best day. It's the day that all the little urchins go back to school. But this best day is not without its complications here in Nanakoke two-year-old labor strike still hanging over the heads of the people in school and in Wilkesbury. Officials tell me that between 200 and 500 kids came to school today without proof of their baby shots. As we've been telling you on News 16 Midday, you don't have those baby shots, you can't go to school. Those kids will have to get them before tomorrow. Frank, I hope those kids aren't using that not having their records as a way to escape all that homework. I hope not, <laughs> and I hope that if they have to get their shots, they stand in the corner tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you, Dorothy. That's our report for now. We'll see you again tomorrow. Remember, the team tonight at 6. Have a good day.